Hi everybody, welcome to the Scuba Diver Magazine channel. Today I'm breaking down 10 spearfishing essentials in collaboration with scuba.com. So spearfishing is widely considered to be the fishing technique with the least impact, if you excuse the pun, because spearfishing is a single diver selecting a single particular fish and with very little chance of bycatch or leaving ghost gear. I mean, there's practically zero bycatch because you're only catching what you're literally aiming at. So a lot of divers are looking to start spearfishing as an alternative to commercial drag nets and longline fishing and getting something from the supermarket. They'd rather do it themselves. And if you are one of those, then here's my top 10 spearfishing essentials. And you can find all of the ones that I break down in this video on scuba.com. You'll struggle to catch anything, or at least very much, especially fish, without one of these. So there are a range of spear gun designs, and they are all specific tools for a particular job. The three basic designs are going to be pole spears, sling, and pneumatic. Pole spears are by far the most simple, and they're best for quite close targets. The length of the pole kind of gives you the range of it. A lot of divers will use these for lionfish because lionfish are quite happy with divers getting quite close to them. And a pole spear is just, yeah, a long shaft. In a lot of cases, they can break down for easier storage and transport. They have a pointy end and the other end has a bungee loop similar to this one. And you just hook that over your thumb, pull it back, hold on to it, and then let go. They're pretty simple to use. The other two are a touch more intricate bungee or sling spear guns like this one. Use one or two or more bungee loops that you stretch and then hook onto the actual shaft. When you pull on that trigger, it goes off, but it's still attached with a filament that's then attached to the gun and then that's attached onto a float. Pneumatic guns have multiple gas chambers inside of them. One that you pre-charge before the dive with like a hand pump and then the other chamber on the inside just tops up the overall pressure when you load the shaft so you have more oomph when you're firing. Which you go for is personal preference. Uh, some divers prefer sling, other prefer pneumatic. Uh, they do similar things in just a slightly different way, but there are lots of designs out there to choose from. They come in different lengths. This one is quite a long one, and the length kind of denotes its range and its maneuverability. If you're hunting in and around rocks or strong current or poor visibility, then a long gun like this is going to be a real pain to move around. It's more designed for big, open, clear water. Spearfishing wetsuits are different to typical scuba diving or surfing wetsuits. They typically have an open cell lining on the inside against your skin, which is harder to don and doff because it's a lot stickier, it grabs onto your skin, but it's very effective at keeping you warm. They also usually are two-part suits to aid with donning and doffing, so you get trousers, they're usually long or high-waisted trousers or full-on salopettes, and then a shirt top to go over the top and some actually have integrated hoods to keep water ingress out so you're spending a lot of time in the water you want the best insulation possible so a spearfishing wetsuit or an apnea wetsuit is really designed for it other special features to a spearfishing wetsuit is you often find a chest pad. When you're loading for the next shot, you rest the butt of the spear gun against your chest and a little extra padding is always welcome on your sternum and it can help prevent it from slipping. And camouflage, of course, on the outer lining. You can stick with a standard black because that's a fairly good all-rounder, but there are a bunch of different camouflage patterns out there. Some designed to be all-rounders, others for a more specific area or substrate. So have a look around and see what suits where your local area is gonna be. Spearfishing on scuba is illegal in many areas. So most spearfishing is done on apnea. 
you're just holding your breath, which makes it more of a challenge and a skill because you're holding your breath. All of that lungful is valuable to you and you don't want to waste it on equalizing your mask as it squeezes when you dive down. So divers will wear low volume free diving masks. A smaller internal volume won't be affected as much by a squeeze as you descend as much as a larger mask would be. The best spearfishing masks will be quite form fitting to your face to bring those lenses as close to your eyes as possible. They often have matte silicone skirts to avoid shining reflections that attract attention to yourself. And they're typically a matching drab color to your wetsuit. So you'll see a lot of black, sometimes browns and greens. Sticking with apnea equipment, if you're diving in open water, then long free diving fins are gonna be the most efficient. There are some considerations when it comes to long fins though. Carbon fiber blades tend to be the best, but if you're smashing them around rocks, then you're just gonna ruin them really quick and they're pretty pricey. So they're best kept for open water. If you are scrambling around rocks and likely to bump your fins on rocks, then plastic polymer blades like this one are typically the best choice. They sometimes come in three different stiffnesses. Stiff fins, which don't bend very much. They're best for training and quite short dives. They pack a lot of punch, but they're gonna knacker your legs unless you think Tour de France is an easy afternoon ride. Medium stiffness, like these ones, is just the Goldilocks. Uh, they're a good all-rounder and soft fins. You don't find too many soft fins very much. They're better for really long, just wearing it all day long, but you're gonna lack a lot of oomph through the water. Most divers tend to end up with kind of a medium stiffness if they're going for a polymer blade. Spearfishing snorkels are the simple good old kiss approach when it comes to snorkels. You can get fancy snorkels with valves and floats and moving parts, but at least with a basic J type snorkel, you know what you're dealing with and it acts appropriately. Valves can flood and block, floats can jam, and when you just need a clear airway to breathe, you can't beat just a traditional J-style snorkel. Personally, I prefer a snorkel that's got a little bit of flexibility in it. I have had snorkels crushed in bags before, which just sucks. Otherwise, just look for a basic J snorkel that suits your style. Some have camouflage, other are just a drab color. Um, you'll have a hook, some kind of hook and loop system to, uh, to hold it on the mask strap. Otherwise, you just kind of tuck it underneath the mask strap. The snorkel isn't always in your mouth, so make sure that the snorkel stays in place and you don't lose it. And if you do have a new snorkel, then try and drop it into the water when you first get it, just to see it floats or sinks. I mean, this one, for example, is specifically designed to float, but it's kind of nice to know which way you may need to chase it if you ever drop it in the water. Scuba.com is your one-stop shop to find all of the top scuba diving brands from the classic big brands like Aqualung, Atomic, Cressy Mares, Scuba Pro, as well as new and exciting brands. As well as having their online dive store that offers free shipping and a pressure-free fit guarantee, where if your suit doesn't fit you quite right, then Scuba.com will send you the next size and collect the wrong one free of charge. But yes, Scuba.com is far more than just a website full of shiny new diving equipment. They also have two dive shops, one near Newport Beach in California and the other on West 17th Street in Manhattan. Here you can try on and buy diving equipment and scuba.com also teaches scuba diving classes. They run guided scuba diving tours, they service diving equipment and they have the Pacific Coast Dive Club if you want to join up and get some diving in. If you're in the market for some new scuba diving equipment then head over to scuba.com. It's a really easy website to remember. Uh, it's literally scuba.com or you can click on this link up here or there's gonna be the same one down in the description underneath this video. Like with scuba diving, we need weights to compensate the positive buoyancy of our exposure protection. Weight belts are still the most common choice 
nylon webbing belts with a traditional quick release buckle are fine they get the job done but divers often choose a rubber weight belt so that they have a bit more grip especially in the water and your lead stays in place without any lead keepers some even have a more traditional belt buckle to be a bit more secure. They're often called Marseille or Marseillaise. Um, they're still quick release. They're just a little less likely to accidentally release. A good buoy is handy for to act as a storage point a resting place and of course a location marker when you're where you're in the water they're all typically bright red sometimes red and white and they have a diver down flag that sticks up out of the water as a free diver on the even when you're on the surface you're a little more than a bump in the waves and if you're wearing camouflaged wetsuit as well you're going to be really hard to spot by any passing boat traffic so a surface marker boy is essential a good float will have a bunch of attachment points that you can clip things to you don't want to dive carrying absolutely everything on your body so it can be nice to come back to the surface to leave it up somewhere safe and then you can access it whenever you come back up things like fresh water spare parts uh, different tools communication devices that you can just leave on the surface and uh, you can come back to it later I think I've even seen some with integrated dry bags to keep some of your stuff safe and dry on the inside, but you're still taking it out into the water. But yeah, a decent buoy is, is really handy when you're out in the water. An essential tool for anybody in or around the water, uh, it only takes a moment to get tangled and caught up in line and a good knife will get you out of trouble. So most spearfishing knives are quite long and thin with like a stiletto tip and sharp edges on both sides as well as being used to cut through obstacles, they're also used to dispatch any fish that aren't killed outright. Typically it's mounted to a belt so that it's very easily accessible. Uh, you can reach it with both hands, but you can also mount a lot of them to an arm or a leg, whatever suits you the best. They'll usually have a simple plastic sheath that you slot the knife into, and then a little rubber ring that hoops over the butt of the knife to hold it in place. You're going to want a decent bag to carry all of your gear to and from the dive site, as well as a cooler bag and maybe even a catch bag or a stringer. You want a good kit bag where you can load up all of your equipment because spear guns and long fins are a pain to kind of transport loose. And it can be nice if the bag is a dry bag as well to keep all your wet stuff contained and keep it from draining all over the inside of your car for the drive home. After you've caught your fish, you need some way to transport it from the water to the shore and then back home. So a stringer will be the most simple. You attach it to yourself or your float and then you thread the fish onto the stringer as you catch them. A catch bag will be a mesh bag with a one-way opening, but these are more for shellfish. As you collect them, you stow them inside of the catch bag. And then a cooler bag or a box that you can load up with ice to keep the catch as fresh as possible for the way home. Little spare parts and accessories that can be useful uh, if your pole spear or your shaft for your spear gun has a threaded tip, then a replacement tip is quite handy to keep with you on your float. If you miss and your shaft just plows straight into a rock, then you're kind of done for the day. But if you can unscrew it and replace it, then you're good to go. There are also some tools that you can help re-bend any uh, bent shafts on the go. Float lines, as the name suggests, it's a line that you attach to your gun that floats. So if you do need to drop it for any reason, it just makes finding and retrieving it easier. A muzzle bungee will help to remove that kind of jerk when the shaft reaches the end of its line and then it basically makes it less likely to yank the gun out of your hand. 
there are a bunch of little things in clips to just make your life easier and if you're hunting in an area with size restrictions for anything then you can normally find metal or plastic rulers or size gauges to gauge the size of what you do catch so you know whether or not to throw it back and save yourself a fine if you're caught catching something too small. So as I mentioned at the start, I pulled all of these examples from scuba.com who sponsored today's top 10. The trick is to know what you're after and where you're going to be because yeah, a big long gun like that one is gonna be more of a pain in some places where a smaller gun might be better suited. The same with fins. Some are better suited for open waters where others better for cramped locations. For any advice or questions you may have about spearfishing, go ahead and ask scuba.com. They have a wonderful website and they explain a lot of the equipment there. Um, they have dive shops on both coasts of the US and staff who can help you uh, out and make your mind up. For everything else, visit scubadivermag.com and subscribe to the channel here. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.